Hey everyone, James Nigemeyer here. Thank you for tuning back into my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about post-spawn fishing, in particular presentations and lures to simplify your approach to post-spawn bass fishing. I'm going to give you four different types of baits and presentations, two of them that are more bottom bouncing related and two that are more power fishing. The post-spawn period can get a pretty bad rap. It can also be known as the junk fishing period because so many different things can work. A guy could work on the end of a long tapering point where fish are pulling and filtering out of spawning pockets, moving out to these secondary points and grouping up and catch them on Carolina rig, possibly a football jig, maybe even a medium to deep dive and crankbait. So there's different things that can work. A guy could catch them on a frog, depending upon how your lake sets up. There's so many different things that could be happening. And so I wanna give you four simplified baits that will work anywhere in the country whether you're on your home lake or if you're traveling to a destination lake and you find yourself having a tough time trying to catch some post spawn fish try these presentations and ideas and i think you'll find that there's some fish that are out there ready to bite number one i think a moving bait like a crankbait can be really valuable specifically a square bill crankbait in the post spawn and let me tell you a couple reasons why i think that number one there's bluegill that are moving up and so i'm going to have kind of a bluegill presentation bluegill pattern and then there's also we're getting close to having more bait fish in the shallow water and a thread fin or a striking sexy shad pattern will also be good you can kind of minimize it to those two different patterns if you're in an area you see a lot of bluegill up around shallow cover under boat docks different things reach for that uh, bluegill pattern there's several different ones that you can fish and uh, a bluegill pattern might be the call but if you're in an area and you see more bait fish on the graph you're noticing balls of bait as you idle in through an area then maybe a thread fin type places to fish it rocky banks riprap banks more 45 type banks as these fish filter out of the pockets and creeks they're going to pull onto those more steeper banks those 45 degree banks and they're going to move they're going to use those as highways to getting to moving out of there maybe uh like a bridge abutments or uh, causeways or dams or dikes and different things like that and then also boat docks underneath boat docks those bass will hide underneath there as they pull off the bank they'll get underneath there and there'll be bluegill that they'll be picking off and that's a great place to also throw parallel to the docks along the floats along the ladders different things like that square bill crankbaits a great tool for that let's try one of the slower more vertical presentation baits I would have to say a jig is a strong producer this time of year. And again, because I think there's so many more bluegill up and that presentation is kind of a more bulkier bait, but the jig's just great all the way through the spring, whether it's pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, post it's just a great bait. And uh, a jig that you can skip up underneath overhanging trees, obviously into boat slips and boat stalls and along the floats, let it sink to the bottom on a slack line and you, you might find that there's some brush underneath there those fish again pulling out of these pocket spawning pockets are going to be relating to those boat docks sometimes they're high in the water column you might get a bite uh, one or two feet down below the floats down below the docks they're suspended high maybe it's 10 feet of water sometimes they're down in the brush a bright day like this probably down in the brush on a more overcast day they're going to be hanging up underneath those floats but the jig uh, I really like, uh, as you've seen probably in some of my videos, I really like the Strike King Skipping Jig and a Rage Bug. Great presentation, a great versatile presentation, whether you're fishing and skipping it or just casting it uh, around any type of presentations. Laydowns too can be really good. The laydowns for the square bill and the, uh, the jig can be really good. And again, those fish are pulling off the banks and they're moving away from the bank oriented stuff and moving out and they'll suspend underneath the floats on a dock but also under the limbs on a lay down log so those are key areas go back to a moving type bait i really like a popper type bait this is a striking uh, kvd splash these little popping type baits are tremendous at getting bit there's still going to be some fish that are hanging around in those spawning areas trying to pick off bluegill that are starting to move in and pick off the eggs from the bass bass beds that are up there in the shallow water and i really feel like a popping style bait a cup mouth popper can catch some of those fish that are up there trying to pick off those bluegill and again there's bait fish that are moving in silver sides minnows uh, some lakes it's herrings some lakes it's um, shiners and threadfin and that popper just to pop, 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 bloop, 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 and let it sit. 
let the let the the rings dissipate and then bloop bloop and sometimes they want it faster just bloop bloop and sometimes you can walk this with the right type of cadence you can walk that popping bait i like to throw it on a shorter rod like a six nine to a, a seven foot this is a loose square bill crankbait rod and i believe it's a six nine medium heavy action and a key for the popping bait that loop knot that's a that's a that's a key key deal it gives it more action freedom to move when you're working it in the water another thing that the popper is good for if they're guarding fry is a possible it's a post spawn technique if those fish are guarding fry this this is great because you're popping it pop 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 and uh, it looks like the the popper's trying to get the fry and the bass will guarding those fry will come up and get it and that's a lot of fun as well but top water is always a good one in the post spawn lastly if you find it's tough you can't get bit on the jig. You need to slow down. The shaky head is a killer in the post spawn. A shaky head with a four and a half inch or six inch finesse worm. Green pumpkin's just really hard to beat anywhere in the country. You may even uh, dye the tail in chartreuse, but slowing down with an eighth ounce or three sixteenths ounce, depending upon the depth and the wind on that particular day. I like throwing it on a spinning rod. It's a seven foot. I believe it's a medium heavy here that I've got this loose. It's a medium action, extra fast. And I'm usually using braided line to a fluorocarbon leader. I think this is 10 pound. And you can pitch this around literally anything. Cypress tree knees, little brush piles like that. Whatever you have that's in front of you, rock, riprap banks, like I was talking about with the square bills, um, around laydowns, under boat docks, just literally anywhere long points where some of those fish will filter out and get on those secondary points as they're pulling out of these bays and pockets in spawning areas the shaky head will mop them up specifically when they're not very aggressive so those are the four different baits that i would consider are must-have baits these are baits that i feel like if you're trying to simplify your post spawn approach these are baits will work just literally anywhere in the country and sometimes guys are intimidated because they think it's a tough time of year to fish. There's fish that are ready and willing. They're recuperating from the spawn. They're trying to put a little bit more weight back on, trying to heal back up from all the rigors of the spawn. And uh, those baits are really uh, high pro highly productive baits that I feel like will catch fish during the post spawn for you no matter where you are. That's it for now, guys. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. Hope you like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to continue to kick out uh, content Mondays and Wednesdays. Thank you for watching this video. And until next time, good fishing.